On November 19th of 2006, Nintendo would launch the Wii and with every console came a copy of a game. This game would be none other than Wii Sports. What started off as a casual game to play with friends would slowly but surely turn into a series of games that speedrunners would shred the pieces. From Wii Sports Club to Wii Sports Resort and Wii Sports itself, this is how players broke every single Wii Sports game. Before I get into the first game, it's important to note that there are multiple ways in which runners push Wii Sports to its limits. For example, if we look at Wii Sports Resort, you'll see that there are all of these different categories, whether it be getting all of the stamps in the game, or simply just playing golf. But for this video in particular, I'm going to be focusing on the All Sports category, which entails that you complete a certain objective within each sport. Most of the time, the objective is to simply win or finish a sport, but sometimes the objectives within a sport are a bit more specific. For example, Example, when it comes to golf, the objective is to finish a 3 hole course as opposed to doing some bigger course. It's also important to note that you are able to play on any difficulty, so for the purposes of saving time, you'll be seeing players stick to the easiest difficulty in most cases. While Wii Sports came out in 2006, there wasn't really anyone who would actually try to speedrun the game for almost a decade. I mean, it's not like speedrunning didn't exist back then, it was just the fact that speedrunning a game like Wii Sports didn't even seem to be something that you could do. With a game like Super Mario Bros, your objective is to beat the game as fast as possible, but how are you supposed to beat a game like Wii Sports? Well, when the mid-2010s rolled around, times for the all sports category would start to pop up, and the first recorded run would be a time of 9.45 by Nate9000. Let's take a look at how Nate pulled this off. Nate would start off with tennis, which is by far the most simple sport in the run. All you have to do is get the 60 points to win the game, which is the equivalent of 4 serves. Nate maximized his chances of getting his points on the first serve by hitting the ball within the first few frames that it's in the air, but even with this power serve, there's still a chance that they'll hit it back, but them hitting it back wouldn't lose that much time, as you could just hit the ball to the other side of the court, which guarantees you'll get the points. While this sport is relatively simple, the next sport would be baseball which is where runs go to die. The goal in baseball is to obviously win, and the best case scenario is that you score 5 runs before the other team scores any, get out so you can switch to pitching, and then get the other team out. While this sounds simple in theory, baseball can very quickly spiral into a complicated mess as there is not only a lot of nuance that goes into getting the best case scenario, but you also have very little control over how the CPUs are going to act as a result of RNG, or luck. I would say that Nate had pretty solid batting for the time, as he was able to get those 5 runs, but he did purposely strike out twice so that he could switch to pitching, which is not the ideal situation as it's faster to bunt and get out as a result of the other team snatching the ball. When it comes to pitching, you would think that striking out the other team would be the fastest option, but this takes at bare minimum 3 pitches for 1 out. It is instead more optimal to not strike them out, but at the same time you don't want to have too bad of a pitch so that they gain on you. Therefore, you just want to throw mid pitches because that way, the batter can get an out in just one pitch as opposed to striking out after three. But this is of course easier said than done because you need the perfect combination of luck and skill. As you can see, Nate lost a lot of time in pitching as a result of bad luck. There's also one more thing that I should mention when it comes to baseball. When Nate enters the baseball stadium, he gets straight to playing baseball. Now why am I mentioning this? Well the thing with Wii Sports is that there are multiple types of copies that have been sold around the world. The 1.0 copy came bundled with every Wii upon its release in 2006. But once 2007 rolled around, Nintendo updated the game to 1.01, in which there would not only be a 5 second cutscene upon entering the baseball stadium, but the animation for getting out would be extended by around a second. Since Nate was playing on 1.0, he had a big advantage as most people did not have a 1.0 copy since it was only sold in North America at the beginning of the game's lifespan. Regardless, the all sports category allows the player to play on any version of the game. Next up was bowling, which is pretty self-explanatory. Since 
getting a strike only takes one turn as opposed to two, it's ideal that you get as many strikes as possible. However, you don't want to spend time setting up for a strike because that's slow. So Nate just stuck to throwing the ball as fast as he could and he was actually able to squeeze out two strikes. Then there was golf, which might be the most iconic and broken sport in all of Wii Sports. As mentioned earlier, people will play on the three hole beginner course for this category and the goal is to of course get the ball in the hole with the least amount of turns possible. Given that there weren't many golf strategies developed in 2015, Nate simply just tried his best and while there were a few extra putts here and there, his golfing was overall good. But just know that golf wouldn't stay tame like this forever. And finally there was boxing. The ideal situation here is that you land critical hit after critical hit while simultaneously avoiding any and all punches. If all goes well, you are able to get a first round knockout, which is exactly what Nate did. Nate would lower his time, but for years he would stay on top despite there being plenty of room for optimization. But in 2017, a player by the name of Mr. Jimmy Steel 125 would not only get a new world record of 916, but he would get it on 1.01. While players such as Jimmy Steel, Nicrovita, and Alaska XP were pushing the world record down, they would come to realize that breaking the 9 minute barrier would be more than doable. It would just take a lot of patience. But in the following year, Alaska would not only get a sub 9, but he would continue to push the game to its absolute limits. Oh my god, please! Dude, don't fucking get up. Don't you fucking get up. Oh my god. After thousands of attempts, Alaska had brought his time all the way down to a 7.54. Now sure, when we looked at Nate's run, there were some obvious points in which time could have been saved, but Alaska now lay almost two minutes ahead of his time. How is this even possible? Well for starters, he would get good luck in both tennis alongside baseball. When it came to baseball, he would get a solid batting inning, followed up by a 6 pitch inning, which as you can see, that alone put him 22 seconds ahead of his 8.12. He would then get 6 strikes in both bowling, three birdies in golf, and a first round knockout. While Alaska's run still had a decent amount of time save, considering that a perfect run for him at the time would have lied at a 7.16, he had raised the bar so high for this category that second place was not even close to his time. Long gone were the days of getting a world record with missed strikes, missed putts, and missed outs. If people were going to beat Alaska, they would not only have to get very lucky, but they would also have to perfect every single sport while simultaneously being able to perform under the immense pressure that usually forms after getting a good game of baseball. Time would pass, and not only would Alaska beat his own world record, but players such as Sphere Cube and Paul in the Mall would also enter the equation, with Paul bringing the run all the way down to his 737. These runs were starting to get super optimized. I mean sure, a low 7 minute time was possible as I previously stated, but Wii Sports could have very well never seen another minute barrier ever be broken if it weren't for a player by the name of Clyde. Earlier on in the life of Wii Sports, players accidentally discovered that if your Wii Remote disconnects amidst a golf swing, you could actually hit the ball again. However, the second ball hit was hard to replicate and it wasn't that useful to begin with, at least that's what people thought. Clyde would investigate this glitch and he would find that if you could hit the ball, take out the batteries in your Wii Remote, and then put them back in, you could not only get that second shot, but you could even hit the ball on the water. With these new golf strategies, players would switch to playing on the intermediate course because on hole 5 you can take a direct path to the hole which saves 7 seconds and on hole 6 you can save 4 seconds. The first person to get a world record with disconnect strats would be a player by the name of Shockwave TLS who would get a time of 735. Wave would continue to get world record after world record, but while he was doing all of this, a player by the name of Eomad Nomad was right behind him the entire time. Here is the list of world records. As you can see, it looks like no one was able to stop Wave, but with each world record, Nomad was only a few seconds away from Wave, and sometimes he was even milliseconds away. He was perfectly capable of getting the world record, if not a sub 7 minute time, but it was simply just a matter of time. All throughout 2021, Shockwave absolutely 
dominated the world record scene. But come 2022, Nomad would get on a run that was not only on pace to beat Wave 703, but it was on pace to be the first ever 6 minute time. Coming out of batting, he was tied with a 708, but he would go on to get really good pitching, putting him 5 seconds in the lead. He would then go on to get a 9 strike game of bowling, which put him 8 seconds in the lead. All that was left was golf and boxing. On hole 4, he got a birdie, followed up by an eagle on hole 5. This run was looking good. Even with losing a few seconds on hole 6, he was still on pace to get the world record, which is exactly what he did, finishing out with a time of 702.067. At the time of recording this video, Wave once again holds the world record with a time of 7 flat, but a player by the name of Mr. Shy Guy has a time of 706 on 1.2. Therefore, if Mr. Shy Guy had done the run on a copy of 1.00, then it was very likely that he would have the world record. While Wii Sports contained 5 sports, Wii Sports Resort would contain 12 of them, which created for a much more jam-packed all-sports run. Nate9000 would once again be the first person I could find who had a recorded world record, and his time would clock in at a 2147. Let's see how he did it. The first sport Nate chose was swordplay, and the objective here is to simply win a duel. It's important to note that some sports like swordplay have multiple modes, but there's a separate category for completing all of these. When it came to swordplay, Nate had an absolutely immaculate second round, but the first round could have definitely used some work. Next up was wakeboarding, and the objective here is to just complete a level on any difficulty. Since this sport is just an auto-scroller, Nate uses the time to flex his tricks. Then there was frisbee golf, in which players opted to do the three-hole course just like in regular golf. Despite there not being as many strategies for frisbee golf at the time, Nate would get a birdie on the first hole, followed up by two holes in one. Then there's archery, and as you'll see, Nate will purposefully miss all of his shots. This is because the goal here is to simply finish a set of stages, and so it's much faster to just shoot the bow as fast as possible, as opposed to trying to aim for a good shot. The same can be said for basketball, as the goal is to once again finish the 3 point contest, as opposed to scoring as high as possible. But things start to spice up again, as in table tennis, the goal is to win a 6 point game, which can be very difficult to do fast, as even the easiest of CPUs will still have a higher chance of returning the ball, as opposed to in tennis where the odds are almost always stacked in your favor. While Nate decimated the CPU some rounds, he wasn't so lucky other rounds as he would have rallies that sometimes lasted up to 20 seconds. Then there was good ol' golf alongside some bowling, which only left 4 more sports. Power cruising and canoeing are both pretty self-explanatory. Throughout power cruising, Nate takes advantage of any speed boost he can use so that he finishes out the race faster, and for canoeing he picks the shortest course as a means of saving that sweet and juicy time. Then there was cycling and the goal is to once again finish the race, but this sport is a bit more complicated than the others. Obviously you want to shake your Wii Remote and Nunchuck as fast as possible to get more speed, but you can't shake too fast because otherwise you will run out of 3 hearts. Therefore, if you want a good time, then you need to not only be speedy, but you need to be good at conserving your energy. Finally, there was skydiving, and all Nate did here was point the Wii Remote down so that he can land on the ground as fast as possible. This run definitely had its good moments, but since this was one of the first records, each and every sport had loads of room for optimization. Just a month after Nate had gotten his 2147, he would bring the record all the way down to a 1927 as a result of just simply just cleaning up all of his sports. This record would stand for a year, but on June 19th of 2017, a player by the name of NY Watt would breach the 19 minute barrier, and in December of the same year, a familiar face would come for the Wii Sports Resort glory. This person would be none other than Alaska XP2. Alaska still chooses to start off with swordplay, but from there on out, you'll notice that the order he does the sports in differs from that of Nate. This is because Alaska puts harder sports at the beginning of the run, such as golf, so then that way if he messes up, he can reset earlier in the run as opposed to later. It's important to note that while you have the liberty to choose which sports you tackle first, you will always have to end the run on skydiving, as time stops when you get your picture taken. When it came to golf, Alaska would get a birdie on the first hole, the second hole, and the third hole, which is not bad at all. He would then go on the frisbee golf in which he'd get two birdies alongside a hole in one. While this score in frisbee golf wasn't as good as Nate's, he still saved a bunch of time as a result of taking less time to line up shots. But when it came to wakeboarding, Alaska would do something monumental. He would get out of his chair and go get a glass of milk. All jokes aside, he would make his way through both the auto scroller that is wakeboarding alongside archery, but when he got to bowling, the run got serious. You see, I have 
haven't mentioned the pace that Alaska has been on throughout the run, because I thought now would be a good time to do so. At this time, Alaska's PB was at 18.06. A sub-18 minute run was looking doable, as he had time saved not only in bowling, but later on in the run. However, coming out of archery, he was basically tied with his PB, so not only was he going to have to get a monumental second half of the run, but he was going to have to get a good bowling. Alaska would bowl strike after strike, and before he knew it, he had bowled an 8 strike game, which put him 6 seconds ahead of his record. Then there's ping pong, and as you'll see here, Alaska serves with a curve ball, which trips up the CPU every single time. And when the CPU serves, he hits the ball to the other side of the table with ease. Alaska essentially had a perfect game of ping pong, as he avoided any and all rallies, and he was now 7 seconds ahead of his record. Then there was basketball, and while you think there wasn't much wiggle room with the sport, you'd be wrong as there was actually a skip discovered that saved a few seconds. Upon shooting your last basketball, there is usually a bell that plays for a few seconds before you can exit onto the next sport. However, if Alaska was able to shoot the last basketball and exit before the spell plays, he would then be able to save a few more seconds over his record, which would more than solidify a sub-17 pace. He was now 10 seconds ahead. While sports such as canoeing and cycling still had a chance to kill Alaska's sub-18 pace, he basically had it in the bag at this point. He would make his way through power cruising, save time on canoeing, and even save time on cycling, so not only did Alaska get the first ever sub-18, but he would get it by a landslide with a time of 17.52. This run by Alaska was super solid, but he knew that there were still seconds to be saved on a lot of the sports, and so come 2018, he would go on to get 6 world records, with Ghost being the only person who was actually able to beat him in that time period. But come August of 2018, Alaska would once again get on a groundbreaking run. Frisbee golf went beautifully with him getting a hole in one on hole one, followed up by an albatross on hole two, which ended up putting him 12 seconds ahead of his previous record. Despite losing a few seconds on swordplay, alongside losing even more time to getting screwed over by the tree in hole two of golf, the other two holes in golf, alongside a smooth frisbee golf from before, allowed for him to still be seven seconds ahead out of archery. Next up was bowling, and despite not having much time to save here anymore, Alaska ended up saving time anyways, because he bowled a perfect 9 strike game, which now put him 11 entire seconds ahead of the record. After a perfect game of ping pong and a successful game of basketball, he was now 14 seconds ahead of the record. This run was absolutely crazy. Even with a shaky power cruising and canoeing, he was able to get a good enough cycling to clutch out a 16.48. Wii Sports Resort was starting to get super optimized. If someone got a run in which they perfected every sport, it would put them just under 16 minutes and 30 seconds seconds, which is only 20 seconds better than the record Alaska had just gotten. However, there is still plenty of time to save in some sports, even if other sports such as ping pong or archery had been brought down to a tee. I think the two most notable sports to mention are both frisbee golf and regular golf. While there is a lot less luck in this run as opposed to the original Wii Sports, there is still luck involved here as the wind can make you lose loads of time when shooting your shot. When it comes to golf, if you land the ball too close to the hole, you will get a replay which loses a few seconds. The same can be said for when you get a chip in alongside a pole hit. So while the goal in regular Wii Sports Golf is to simply go for perfection, it's a bit different on Wii Sports Resort given the replay system, so there's usually always time to be saved here, because you want to do as best as you can while simultaneously not doing so good to the point where you lose time to replays. When it came to the other 10 sports, there were only seconds to be saved, if even that, but think about it like this. If you were to save just one second on on each sport, then that would add up to 10 seconds of time saved throughout the run. So with a few years of Wii Sports Resort getting more optimized, alongside a plethora of new players entering the scene, the record now stands at a 1547 by Benson, with second place trailing only 4 seconds behind. While most people are only familiar with Wii Sports Resort in the original one, there is still one more Wii Sports game that most people seem to have forgotten about. This game would be none other than Wii Sports Club. Wii Sports Club was essentially a remake of the original game, as it features the same 5 sports from before, but despite this fact, its speedrun has a couple of changes. For starters, the sports in this game take longer to complete than they do in the original, which is mainly thanks to there being added cutscene time. When it comes to baseball and tennis, the strategies are 
pretty much the same when compared to the original Wii Sports, which is both a good thing for Wii Sports players, but also a bad thing because that means you have to play baseball. However, golf is a tad bit different. The fastest course here is Classic Course A. Wind is very much still a factor like it is in the other two games, but thankfully, if you make a replay worthy shot, you are actually able to skip the replay instead of being forced to watch it like in Wii Sports Resort. After that, all you have left is bowling and boxing, which are the same ideas as before, as you're always aiming for a 9 strike game in bowling and a first round knockout in boxing. Despite there being recorded records of Wii Sports Club as early as 2015, no one seemed to be interested in grinding the record down. That was until Cedric Pye got the world record in 2019. He would get a time of 12 minutes flat, and for the next two years, he would play on and off and bring the record all the way down to a 10 29 as a result of just optimizing the sports alongside getting better luck. But a month after Cedric got his 10:29, a player by the name of Joe Nasty would enter the equation and he would get a time of 10:12. While this run was far from perfect, the record was finally starting to get optimized. Joe Nasty would continue to push for sub 10, but one day he would get on a very interesting run. The run didn't start off too good as he had a pretty mediocre tennis, but come baseball, he ended up getting good batting as he started the game off with a home run followed up by a triple which would put him at two points. He would then quickly make his way to five points and out of batting alone, he was already 18 seconds ahead of his previous record. He'd lose a tiny amount of time in pitching, but he still had a three pitch inning, which is insanely impressive because that is the least amount of pitches you can get the other team out in. Now hole one in golf wasn't the best, but he would get a very quick birdie in hole two, followed up by an eagle in hole three. Despite Joe Nasty only getting a four strike game of bowling, Joe Nasty made his way to boxing and this is what would happen. While the run still clocked in with a time of 9.51, the opponent had gotten back up, which lost about 20 seconds. The thing is, is that getting a first round KO in this game is a bit trickier than it is in the original, and this is mainly due to RNG. While there are ways in increasing your chance of getting a first round KO, it's nowhere near as consistent as it is in the original game. Nonetheless, the record would stand for a year, until Jonasty himself came back to beat it with a time of 9.40. Despite this being 11 seconds faster than his previous record, he was behind his 951 throughout the entire run and he was behind by a large margin. But because he got a first round KO in boxing, he was still able to destroy his previous time. It's clear that Wii Sports Club has a lot of untapped potential and while the other two games are more optimized, they too have a lot of potential. We still have yet to see a sub 7 in Wii Sports and when it comes to Wii Sports Resort, it looks like there's still room for there to be at least another 10 seconds saved. Despite Wii Sports being a simple game that quite literally anyone can play, speedrunners have proved that they can make anything broken and complicated, and Wii Sports is absolutely no exception. So while I didn't cover all the other categories the Wii Sports games have to offer, this has been a brief introduction on how players broke every single Wii Sports game.